Hello, my name is This is Joy Girl, and I've got a fever. No, I'm not sick because early translations for the fever pack of the new Viva Card Booster Pack is now available. So I was actually working on a video predicting King and the Toby Ropo's bounties, which has now been rendered redundant because that information has already been revealed. But lucky for us, that means we can discuss the actual bounties plus loads more information instead. First of all, big thank you to Japanese speaking One Piece fans who makes this information readily available to the rest of us, and I'm basing our discussion of translations by Soulstorm OP, so thank you. So this fever pack was all about the Beast Pirates, led by none other than their Governor General Kaido, which this Viva card pack does contain some information about, such as the fact that he's 59 years old, 710 centimeters tall, or that's 23.29 feet for you Americans, and he was born in the Grand Line. Interestingly, it also states that Kaido is the strongest creature. Not that he is called the strongest creature, or that he is said to be the strongest creature. He is the strongest creature. And whilst we may have to wait for some revisions or further clarification in terms of translations, at this point, it seems like this is just a fact, that Kaido is the strongest creature in the world, which opens up for a lot of questions and anticipation for his backstory. Now you guys know my theory on this, Kaido became the strongest creature because he proved it by fighting all sorts of beasts in the wild, which is a theory I developed based on the Japanese Kintaro legend, and if you haven't watched that video, I'd highly recommend that you do, until we finally get this clarified through his long-awaited backstory in the series. Now moving on, we also got some other information about Hacha, who is 188 years old, 6,680 centimeters tall, which is just under a massive 220 feet, and confirms him to have come from Punk Hazard, which is something we already knew. Now the only really interesting thing about these details is Hacha's age. We know the numbers were the result of experimentations to recreate ancient giants, and for Hacha to be that old raises some questions. It got me thinking of how far the experimentations to recreate giants date back to? Or was Hacha simply part of a race that already has a longer lifespan and was experimented on to try turn into an ancient giant? For example, we know that giants in general have a longer lifespan than humans, and the numbers may be giants who were experimented on to be transformed into the specific ancient giant race. Hacha's age could even be the result of the experimentation which involved extending one's age to match the lifespan of the ancient giant race. In any case, whilst the numbers have been largely underwhelming, I am still quite intrigued as to their origins because this is another case of a so-called failed experimentation involving lineage factor, but for the sake of today's discussion, let's move on. Because we also found out that Queen is 56 years old, making him only 3 years younger than Kaido, and interestingly enough, exactly the same age as Vinsmoke Judge. Queen, like Kaido, was also born in the Grand Line, and comes in at 612 centimeters or 20 feet tall, which is only 1 centimeter shorter than King, who is revealed to be 613 centimeters, which is essentially the same if we go by the Imperial system, but King is a fair bit younger than Queen at 47 years old, making him only 1 year younger than Katakuri for example, and what I found most interesting was his birthplace, also being the Grand Line, which in itself is pretty vague, because I suppose the Grand Line encompasses paradise as well as the new world, and at two points, the Grand Line also intersects with the Red Line. So I guess we didn't really get anything majorly telling about King's race in addition to what we already found out so far in the manga, so I guess we're just gonna have to wait. So finally, let's get to the bounties, which is in any case what I originally planned to discuss with you today. Now this is the list of bounties that we got for the Toby Ropo members and King. Page 1 at 290 million berries, Ulti at 400 million, Sasaki 472 million, Black Maria 480 million, Who's Who 546 million, and King with 1.39 billion. Now some of these aren't so surprising. For example, in my predictions, I had Ulti exactly at 400 million berries, and Black Maria at slightly higher with 490 million. But some of these really are quite surprising. Page 1's for example being below 300 million berries was quite unexpected for me, because whilst he hasn't had a great showing in terms of strength, the fact that he holds the status of a Toby Ropo made me think that he would at least have a bounty over 350 million berries. This is considering that Hawkins and Apu are not members of the Toby Ropo, but each have a bounty over 300 million, with Hawkins at 320 million and Apu with 350 million. So this leads me to really wonder about Ulti and Page 
everyone's backstories. This is something that I thought we were going to get in the manga during their fights. Actually, I was expecting a bit of a backstory for each of the Tobiropo, but seeing as we didn't and they're already defeated, it seems like individual backstories for each of the Flying Six are unlikely. So maybe we'll get these in the Viva cards either in this pack or another. But now, me with my wild brain is now conjuring up scenarios on how Page One joined the Tobiropo with such a low bounty. And although yes, we should note that bounties aren't a measure of strength and abilities, it's also true that Page One hasn't been so impressive himself either. So I'm imagining a scenario where Ulti declared herself to be a package deal and demanded that her sweet Pei Pei be also granted the Tobiropo rank if she was to join. But in terms of some of the other Tobiropo members, Sasaki having a lower bounty than Black Maria didn't come as all that much of a surprise for me. Whilst I did initially think Sasaki to be stronger than Black Maria with their initial introductions and portrayals, their respective fights and showings in their one-on-one -on -one fights really boosted my respect for Black Maria. So I think the two having very similar bounties with Black Maria slightly coming up on top fits with what we've seen so far. And before we discuss King's bounty, it was also confirmed that each of the Tobiropo members are able to use both armament and observation haki, which also doesn't really come as a surprise. But the fact we didn't see each of them use both forms of haki does raise the question of why not? And for me, it begs the question of whether the ancient Zoans were just very confident in their natural Zoan durability and strength. Now, as for King's bounty, what surprises me the most is that his bounty is higher than Marco's. Considering Marco's Captain Whitebeard whilst alive had a higher bounty than Kaido, I think it's natural to have assumed that his first commander would have had a higher bounty than that of Kaido's first commander. And again, I think we really have to stress that bounties aren't just representative of strength because King's higher bounty may just be the result of his villainous demeanor who may also wreak havoc against normal citizens and his overall cold-blooded ruthlessness. Because we do know that this is something that the world government takes into account, such as in our introduction to Eustace Kid, who had a higher bounty than Luffy precisely because of his love for blood. It's also possible that King's race and his potential backstory may make him a greater threat than Marco in the eyes of the world government. But then in that case, simultaneously, I'm surprised that King's bounty is as low as it is when considering his race is close to extinction with him being the last member. 1.39 billion berries isn't such an astronomical number that I believe reflects the interest that would exist surrounding such a rare race. So let's add this to the list of things we'll have to see fold out in the series. For now, we're going to move on and we're going to move on to Yamato, whose Viva card states Yamato to be female, which I imagine is going to re-spark lots of debate about Yamato's gender, which I don't really want to get into. And if you guys want to share your thoughts on this topic, I will only have one request to please always remember to be respectful whichever side of the argument you're on. We're all friends who share one awesome trait after all, and that is our shared love and passion for One Piece. But for me, I'm still waiting for Yamato's development in the manga. I've always said that a big part of Yamato's character development will see Yamato embracing their own identity and not merely wanting to live out Odin's, which in the manga is the reason Yamato gives for going by male pronouns in the first place. But at this point, we simply haven't seen this in the series. In any case, we also have other information about Yamato, and more interestingly for me, Yamato's birthplace is listed as unclear, which perhaps may be teasing us for something to come by way of a backstory in the series series itself, in which case I cannot wait. Now this wraps up the information I found on the Viva cards and I would be keen to discuss this with you further so let me know any thoughts and speculations that these additional details spurred for you and maybe we can discuss it further in another video or in a stream together. Don't forget to like and share this video and please do subscribe for more One Piece updates like these and also join our Discord server for other One Piece related fun. And remember that becoming a patron can give you fun Discord perks and powers and on that note thank you to our patrons who help support the channel. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.